In addition to that speed component that I just talked about, the tangential speed and the figure that we looked at where objects at the uh, equator are moving faster towards the east than objects at higher latitudes, at the same time we also have the rotational component. So if you think about a cloud that's moving across the face of the earth and the earth turning underneath it, the cloud always has to actually rotate as well to keep its face towards the face of the earth. It's the same kind of thing if at the pole you're just doing this, you're just rotating. Objects moving across the face of the earth are also rotating at the same time they're moving to the east. See, I told you it got complex. This is the part where you can fast forward if it's getting to be too much. But again, if you kind of want to get into the details, this is how to do it. So there's a rotational component to the Coriolis effect as well. <clears throat> and a good example of this can be seen if we look at a pendulum. If this pendulum is going back and forth, not moving, not changing its path, and the Earth is rotating underneath it, the result will be something like this. So here we have time zero, pendulum moving back and forth. Here's the United States, here's Russia, pendulum moving back and forth. As the Earth rotates, okay, on its axis, we're looking down on the pole of the Earth, it's moved off a little bit. Now, the pendulum is pointing towards a different part of the Earth. This is actually an Eskimo here. You can't really tell from this figure very well, uh, so I suggest you take a look at 814 in the book. But now you can see that this person has moved 1 24th of the way in its rotation around the Earth. And if we kept going, the pendulum would actually look like it was moving in different directions, but actually it's the Earth that's moving. And a really good example of that is the Foucault pendulum. If you've ever been to the Griffith Park Observatory or other places that have those pendulums, you've watched the thing swing back and forth and it looks like what's happening is the pendulum is moving and knocking down dominoes for, uh, to keep track of different times. But in fact, it's not the pendulum that's moving, it's the Earth that's moving underneath the pendulum. Of course, from our perspective, standing on the moving Earth because we're standing on the Earth that's moving, it looks like the pendulum is moving. But in fact, the pendulum isn't moving at all. It's just like this example here. It's the Earth turning underneath the pendulum that's causing the apparent motion of the pendulum to change. So it's that apparent change in the direction of the pendulum. Again, remember, it's not really changing, but it looks like it is because the Earth is rotating underneath it, it's had apparent change that the Coriolis effect takes into account. So again, it's a kind of correction term to account for Earth's rotation. And here's an example of the rotational component of it. So remember, the Coriolis effect has both a tangential component, that eastward velocity component, it also has the uh, rotational component aspect to it. Now, I promise to tell you one of the kind of examples that aren't really good examples, but one of the ways this is commonly taught is uh, on a merry-go-round. Imagine a merry-go-round where there's just you and your friend on the merry-go-round. There's just two horses that took the other ones off. They used to have those merry-go-rounds too that you spin in the schoolyard. I don't think they have those anymore. I think too many kids went flying off and got hurt or something like that. But if you think of a traditional merry-go-round, maybe like one you find at Disneyland or at the Santa Cruz boardwalk, the horses going around, if you throw a ball at your friend, by the time the ball gets there, your friend is going to be in a different location. So to actually play catch with somebody on a merry-go-round, you have to throw the ball ahead of the person so that by the time they get there, the pie and the ball gets there, they arrive at the same time. That's one of the examples used the Coriolis effect, and I don't know how effective that is for, for students studying it or not, but that's just one of the ways that people teach it. I think if you study the figures in the book that you have more, uh, a more clear idea of the kinds of ways that, uh, of how the Coriolis effect actually works. Another way to think of it, too, is if you're on an object on the equator and you're moving at that 464 meters per second, 
as you move further north, you're still moving at 464 meters per second to the east, okay? But the Earth is not moving that fast. And as you go even to higher latitudes, you still have that 464 meter per second eastward component because nothing's acted upon you. You're just heading north. So it looks like, as you're heading up from the equator, it looks like you're traveling to the east because the Earth beneath you is actually traveling east more slowly than you were when you left, took off from the equator. So those are just some other simple kinds of examples that might help you better understand the Coriolis effect. Of course, remember the mantra, Northern Hemisphere right, Southern Hemisphere left. And you'll be fine for all intents and purposes in a course of studies in oceanography and probably meteorology as well. Well, let's summarize the Coriolis effect. Moving objects in the Northern Hemisphere appear to deflect to the right. Moving objects in the Southern Hemisphere appear to deflect to the left. What we didn't mention, but which is true, and for those of you that need the details, the Coriolis effect increases with latitude. So we get a stronger Coriolis effect as we go from the equator to the poles. In fact, the Coriolis effect at the equator is zero. So an object moving along the equator, like a hurricane, will stay, or tend to stay, on the equator. But as it gets a little bit north of the equator, those hurricanes will begin to deflect off to the right, as many of them do. The Coriolis effect is speed dependent. Faster objects experience greater Coriolis deflections. And as we're most interested in, at least conceptually, the Coriolis effect is an important concept, an important factor for large scale motions of the atmosphere. So the circulation in the atmosphere, circulation in the ocean, and of course, hurricanes as well. That concludes our lesson of the Coriolis effect.